Clay, have you ever um, have you ever heard of the video game called Katamari Damacy? Is that Pig Latin for something? It is. It's a game. It's it's for uh, Game of the Year 2015 or something. I think. But ah, if you I haven't have if you haven't heard of it, it's this little game that uh, kind of is huge in Japan, and there's been a whole bunch of little spinoffs. But you play as this little alien character who is sent down to Earth to collect things, and you have a score based system, and there's a time limit. And the way that he collects things is he starts off very, very small, where he's like the size of like a, a penny or something like that. And he's rolling around mm-hmm. this ball that he's called his katamari. And the katamari, when it rolls over things that are like the same size or smaller, it picks them up. It like stickies to the thing. So he rolls this ball around and he starts collecting stuff. And as you get the ball bigger and bigger, it's like sort of pushing around a snowball. As the ball gets bigger and bigger, it picks up bigger and bigger things until eventually... Mm-hmm. You know, you're rolling around a city and you're picking up like cars and buses and then buildings eventually. And then you can roll up the world and stuff like that. Um, But the point is that when you start very small, you can see all the individual pieces, right? And as you start rolling bigger and bigger and bigger, the pieces become very indistinct to you Mm, in the middle of it. And uh, I'm starting to feel that way about Star Trek Picard here, I think. I think the ball has been rolled so big that I no longer know what I'm looking at Mm, (laughs) anymore. Yes. And uh, I don't know. That's what it made me think of. It just made me think of collecting plot threads, which we're going to get into. But there's a lot of plots going on at this point, and I don't really know what I can see uh, uh, to make of any of it. There's there's so much going on that they literally had to make Picard lie down for an episode. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on his feet all day, drinking no yeah. less on that mission that away that vital away mission he's they're drinking which i thought was mm-hmm. a fascinating turn uh, decision yeah. but anyway this one's called two of one it is the sixth episode of picard star trek picard's second season came out on april 7th 2022 written by cindy appel and jane mags directed by jonathan two takes freaks and universe date 2024 in this one called Two of One, with the help of Tallinn, Picard and the crew infiltrated Gala on the eve of a joint space mission to protect one of the astronauts they believe to be integral to the restoration of the timeline, Rene Picard. Mm-hmm. Corey makes a startling discovery about her father's work. So this is a good place to start. On uh, the lives... With, this, with the brand new plot thread they're introducing <laughs> well, right halfway through the show. Even, even before that, on the lives of my children... I would not have been able to tell you what the, that woman's name was in the show. Yeah. And yeah. when they were doing that sequence where he's like, well, Samantha died after two weeks. Well, Jane died after two weeks. Well, Rachel's dead after seven months. I was like, I hope he says her name because I'm not going to be able to recognize when the emotional impact is supposed mm-hmm. to happen here. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. You could have given me a million guesses. I never would have guessed. I think it's Corey. It's K-O-R-E. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Which, which I don't know if the implication there is that he cycled through all the other spellings of Corey first. Maybe, yeah. This is Maybe the one that he ended up on. Yeah, he's he's already killed four other Corys. Honestly, when I was reading this blurb getting ready for it, I got to that sentence and I was like, is that a typo? Who's who's Corey? <laughs> <laughs> Corey even... <laughs> Corey's the intern who's in charge of uploading the file onto Paramount+. Plus. I was like, is that a, just a weird typo for Picard or something? I don't know. So here we are. Can we? Uh, can I just pick the topic that we start off with this? First, well, first, how are you anyway? I'm fine. Good. I'm fine. I'm. Uh, I had to uh, create a diversion earlier, so I <laughs> did an entire soft shoe run <laughs> routine <laughs> and sang a, uh, a Crystal Gale song from my balcony. I actually would like to start with what took my entire focus this episode, which is the shortest episode of Star Trek uh, Picard so far that we've seen. It was like 38 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I am. Well, the the Q plot, and which dovetails into the Soong plot, is bonkers in this show. And <laughs> yes, I, it I, is. <laughs> I think I think I need to discuss what exactly is going on and what like what the show is saying is happening here. So, am I right to assume that Q does not have powers in this timeline anymore? You're right to assume that. Okay, I am going to assume that. So Q does not have his powers here. It, well, I I don't know. It's All tough we know to is say. that he was snapping, right? He was snapping right. in that, that, that ending of that episode where he was in the past with Rene Picard and he was trying to do something and it wasn't happening and he looked upset at it. We have not seen him do 
anything magical yet. The most magical thing I think is that made me think he still had his powers is in one of the previous episodes, he gives the cure to Soong, which implies to me that he has powers. That plus the fact that he is posing as her therapist, which if he doesn't have powers requires him to take out a lease. He rented an office. Yeah, he rented an office. (laughs) (laughs) Somehow got his name into a database that she should, she could find. She got. Um, she's a reference. She got. She's a high-ranking astronaut on a critical mission, and he yes. got the reference for the therapy session. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So, if he does not have his powers, that alone is bananas. That he went mm-hmm. through all that trouble and it went off without a hitch. This is this is a very modern Star Trek problem, and this kind of ties into my Katamari thing, where you don't really think about this until you start thinking about what all this means. So when he gets to Soong, right? He gives mm-hmm. this cure to him, and he's like, I need you to do me a favor. And Soong says, well, since you saved my daughter's life, sort of, I have to do this favor for you. What is Soong doing at this point? Why does Soong have to donate so much money to get onto the board of this gala know. when all know. he's going to do is wait for them <laughs> until they walk across the street, and he's going to try to run them over with his car. It's the, same, it's the same plan that Homer had to run over the dean when he went back to college. <laughs> the, the flaw is that he's driving like a fucking Prius, and it has no torque. And the only it's thing he can do... It's a Tesla. Those things have a bit of pickup to them. <laughs> the only thing he could run over is a 90-year-old man. In man, that I'll tell you. That sequence, in an episode... Nay, I say a series that does so much heavy lifting with ADR dialogue that you don't actually see people say. (laughs) Watching the two of them walk outside and then someone ADR line comes on and says, we should go outside. It's faster this way. (laughs) As though they have to walk like six blocks to get back to the place that she's this in the thing same was. building isn't she? why is and she then, in a different building yeah it's like oh. and then somehow he knew they were gonna be there uh, uh, well enough that he could try and hit the, he was ready to hit them with his car <laughs> <laughs> unless like i mean unless the idea here is that he was it was like a, a coincidence like he was dejected he had he had failed and then all of a sudden there they are but they didn't no, I don't get that, that impression. It didn't read that way. No, he's no. waiting for them. Yeah. Because he knows. He knows Picard is old, and he's got to take that shortcut across the courtyard to get back to the, <laughs> to the ballroom. <laughs> he just waits for, by the nearest uh, bathroom, and he's like, well, I know he has to piss eventually. I'll just hit him when he's there. That, I mean, if Q had his powers, I find all of this more forgivable. And so I think it's equally stupid, but it's more like I can understand that there's a godlike being pulling the strings here about mm-hmm. what's... But why why did he need to donate to get onto the board to get to that gala? He didn't do anything in the gala. Why why is this brilliant scientist plan instead of poisoning her her drink or like shoot her mm-hmm. or something like that? Why is it run her over with my car in a public like a public event? People are there waiting for stuff to happen and he's just going to run them over with his car. It's it's why crazy. Why doesn't if he's paid all this money and he's now on the board, why doesn't he use his board power to stop her from be going onto the ship? Right. Why doesn't he Elon Musk it with Twitter and just, yeah. and just say, we're not going to do this anymore? I, I don't more know. questions. More questions. How does he have the money and the pull to do this? Because we later on, we see the Doc Brown mad scientist committed paper <laughs> that his, his, his daughter <laughs> finds where it's apparently well publicized that this guy is is a fucking psychopath yeah but they let him onto the board <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know maybe they maybe these were like they were desperate. fringe websites that were that were pu- publicizing this stuff but it was <laughs> multiple sites <laughs> well, that she- that that one hearing he had with leah thompson and Worf's grandfather was publicized enough that People now know outside of that room that he tried to uh, skirt the Shenzhou convention, uh, Shenzhen convention. That's fun to say. Um, (laughs) And then on top of that, he has a history of eugenics. Yes. And 
they literally refer to him as a mad scientist. <laughs> but yeah, you know what? Money's money, right? You know, it's 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 like a it's like an Epstein thing where it's like what you're you're trying so hard to to advance science, you're going to take money from wherever it comes right. from. Funding you know, is hard regardless. to guess. You, exactly. you, don't, you don't you don't care where the money comes from. Why why does NASA need a fundraiser for itself? <laughs> Isn't she a NASA scientist? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what a strange episode. I, I, I would like to sum this up. Yeah. Towards the end, I kind of sighed heavily when it was over. And uh, my girlfriend had watched maybe like 60% of it with me. And she had since left. And after it was over, and my heavy sighed, she said, it seems like a bad show. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. And what's weird is I thought this episode was like good for the show but when when you go back and you're like what the what the hell was going on like why is this why is this happening down to its I don't know down to its incredibly stupid structure of being like 34 minutes from now something's going to happen to Picard that was so fucking hacky it was so hacky because everything in everything that happened in the lead up to that none of it was interesting and none of it built tension towards it like i i understand why they did that it's because everything else was like boring or whatever yes. and they needed something to keep you engaged but i honestly think it would have been more interesting if you didn't know he was going to get hit by a fucking car <laughs> <laughs> like, like you know something is going to happen and the the stuff that they're showing you they're not playing it with any level of tension to lead into this idea that he's going to get his, his the shit kicked out of him or so shot or something like there's no uh, like I mean, maybe being surrounded by security guards, you're gonna like, oh, I guess they're gonna stomp his ass out. Or like when Sung shows up, oh, maybe he's gonna shoot Picard. Why would he shoot Picard? He doesn't know who Picard is, but he seems to know who Picard is because yeah. Q told him. But yeah, <clears throat> you know, it's like it doesn't. I don't. I don't think it really. The structure didn't really do itself any favors. And then when the result is that he just gets hit by a car. <laughs> 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 the most Star Trek uh, of, of plot lines, I think. Imaginable. Oh boy! I oh, it boy. really the only thing when he got hit by the car, my my mind really was just like, well, this is the first for Star Trek mixed with Star Trek doesn't run people over with cars. <laughs> like no, <it's>, generally not. <laughs> it, it's I don't know. Terribly shot too. It, it was terribly shot. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I for a second when they did it, I I thought did. Patrick Stewart do his own stunts here because they <laughs> I thought they brushed him with the car very lightly like to the point where even knowing that this countdown was happening that something was going to happen to him when he got hit by the car I did not think that was the thing that did it right because he was... kind of pushes her out of the way and then he just kind of gets side swiped yeah, a little he bit he jumps out of the way a little bit does like a little yeah I was yeah. I want to see him get Brad Pitt and meet <laughs> Joe Black where it's like knocked between two cars yes flipped over no, doesn't happen. Sorry, before we move on to anything else, I do I do want to um the, do, do you want to hamstring the coverage of our coverage of this season by just talking about that teaser for the next season for the I rest know, of the I know, I was think I was thinking about leading with that too, but I think people would rather we talk about it. We'll save that for the end. But sure. Q's cuz I do have a lot to say about that, but Q's plot is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so complicated. And I don't understand. This is one of those things, right, where I'm kind of thinking that there's a 20% chance they're going to be able to explain this, but there's no way they can justify what has happened here, right? Because the ignore all the facts about Q becoming a therapist without his powers and managing to do this convincing thing and managing to get himself in all the right places at all the right times. Why did they choose to attempt to kill her this way? This is the weirdest, yeah, weakest way. You you couldn't come up with a less reliable way to kill somebody in a way that Soong has been built up to. He must kill her to be a yeah. success. He has to to save his daughter's life, and he can't do it. And it's not because he has a gun pointed at her head and has like a, a moment of consciousness, conscious, uh, conscious strikes him or something where he's like, mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. kill and then he goes home dejected to Corey or whatever and says, like, I'm, I'm sorry, I love you, but I just won't go that far. He tries to run her over, and he hits the wrong person in it. Um, and and is Sung Q's backup plan? Because it seems like Q's actual plan, his A plan, 
is I'm going to talk her into being so depressed <laughs> that she removes herself from the situation. Right. And when If that doesn't work, then I'll have someone hit her with a car. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me, uh, obviously the context is different, but it reminds me, there's the, uh, the sixth season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, right? The bad guys are these three just kind of regular shitty dudes, like really toxic dudes. And the whole season is them doing all of this sort of like magic and monster-based stuff, and Buffy just keeps kicking the shit out of them. And then eventually, after she beats them, like completely destroys them, one of them just gets a gun, shows up to Buffy's house, and starts shooting people. Sure. And it's like, it's that's the vibe I'm getting from this, where it's like, why are you doing all of this stuff, but you're, then your plan is just to kill this person like you're going this is the longest longest way to go to to get a ham sandwich i've seen in star trek in a long yeah. time they had to fill six episodes to get to this point of realizing that they're trying to kill i don't know why like they have to explain why q is not just actively trying to kill her right they have to explain right that. like and i mean do we okay do we know for sure that that sung's mission is to kill her is to stop her. And as a, like, what else could he be trying to do? Well, I was wondering if he was actually supposed to take Picard out of the out of the equation. Oh, but is, is there any the dialogue that hints at that? I'm not sure. I, I no, not but I, I'm just I'm just thinking like in in the grand scheme of things, like talking about his Q's plan as we are. If he's if Q is not just showing up to one of her therapy sessions with a crowbar. Right. Um, why is he hiring somebody else to to do something that he's not willing to do himself? Um, because he wants Picard to suffer would be the reason, right? He wants Picard to be able to watch this fail in front of him, you know? Okay. But I guess, yeah, I guess I'm just thinking like... That's the only reason I could think of that he, Q would prolong the ability for Rene Picard to exist and be capable of doing something is that he wants Jean-Luc Picard to be able to bear witness to the failure. Yeah. So does, how does he bear witness to her getting killed by Adam Sung? Well, th I mean, that's, like, what, that's, that's the argument really, for... That's not really prolonged either. No, that's the argument for Sung trying to hit Picard with the car. Oh, Jean, Jean-Luc okay, sure. Picard. Is that like... Yeah. They might come back and say, oh, fake out. Like, I knew I was just trying to wing him a little bit and make sure that he got hospitalized, but not actually yeah. run over Renee. Because, like, I was thinking it, maybe Picard is the target, and it's not that they're trying to straight up stop Renee from going on the mission, but they're trying to make sure she's in the headspace that she somehow fucks it up. Mm. But if that's the case, that that's just, like, even more complicated than it already is. And I just, I don't know how much more you can twist out of this without some of it make at least some of it making narrative sense yeah there's there's so many angles to it too and it's it's another like oh what i would give for two incestuous romulans <laughs> <laughs> do you think you like the first season better than the second season i think i do i think i do too there's just nothing really happening in this this one um the first one had a bunch happening, but it was all bad. This one seems to have like not as much happening, and it's equally bad. So if you just it's, want stuff, it's not the one to pick. There's a lot happening, but it's none of it is... There's like 15 different plot threads in the show, but none of them are really amounting to anything interesting because I, I can't remember if it was... Was it you that, that said in the last time we did this that said this is like... One person wrote an episode and then handed it off to the next person, who then handed it off to the next person. I think I might that have might said have, something. It was either you or the, it, maybe the maybe the red letter meteor guy said yeah. this, but it's like it has that feel to it where it's like one person writes an episode, then they hand it off to a next the next person who just writes the follow up, who then hands it off to the next person who just writes the follow up. And, and yeah, so I, I think that was red letter, but I, and the, yeah. I would add the caveat that it's like they only told them what the last line of the script was or something. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and then they got, they had to go write another one. That's like totally yeah. disconnected because the tone is so, or the, not even the tone, but the like, actually, you know, I would even take it, go a step further and say, it's not like one person writes it and then hands it off. It feels like what everyone who, who's writing this gets a two sentence synopsis of the episode that came before. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like wh whoever wrote this one, the synopsis they got was, uh, you know, Picard 
Picard and the crew have to infiltrate a fancy party to stop, uh, to make sure that Renee gets on that ship. And Q has contacted Adam Sung to try and stop that from happening. Yeah. And that's where they just go from there. <laughs> and, and, and the, the Borg queen is now in the mind of, of Gerardi. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, it's just, we get- everything is so disjoint. There's so much stuff going on and none of it feels like it's connected at all. And I don't, and it doesn't feel like it's going to, like you said, it doesn't feel like it's going to make sense. And they are not giving you, they're not giving us enough to grasp onto to, to feel like it's going to make sense. They, it's, it feels like they're holding all of their cards back and everything they, all the cards they keep turning over aren't actually moving the story forward because they're just creating more story. Yeah. Like the Adam Sung being a, a, a crazed eugenicist, I mean, I guess that leads into possibly how he ends up as the king of the world or something. Yes, uh, yeah. They, they had to lay that track down. Yeah, but it's just so late in the season to start just coming up with stuff like this. It feels yeah. very disjointed. <laughs> they only introduced him last episode, right? Adam Soon should so, have yeah. been there from the start. There's no reason to not have these characters be there from the very start. It, it doesn't make... You know, it's like, unless it's... I don't know. I won't even speculate. Also, Adam better have brothers or something. Because I don't know how the Sung name made it 300 years if all he's doing is creating creating his children in a lab. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Unless maybe that's the other thing they're going to do is be like, oh, all, all of the Soongs are clones yeah. of Adam. Yeah. He's, he's, he'll, oh, his boy. brother will show up at the funeral or something, I think. That's what they're going to do, isn't it? All the Soongs throughout history that we've seen are all clones of the same person. Is that why they look the same? Yeah, maybe. Could be. His it name's be. Adam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good point. Well, that seems pretty likely, I think, at this point. Um, Renee Picard. So the one bright spot in this episode is, I think, John Luke talking to Renee when he tracks yes. her down. Yes, that was great. I will caveat that by saying that scene is really good. He felt really like John Luke Picard. I thought that the speech was nice. I thought that there was a salient point to it. However, when you look at what comes before that and what comes after it, it feels completely detached from anything that's going yes. on there. Like, I don't know why he's yeah. telling her that. I don't know why that convinces her of anything. I don't know why she is so trusting of this 90-year-old security guard that she thinks she's found. I don't know <laughs> if you can cure... I don't know if... <laughs> I think the show is doing this thing of, like, confusing clinical comp- depression with being slightly down in the dumps and you can just shake off yeah. down in the dumps over something yeah. it, it's that but that's always been like a discovery problem this show th- this new modern stuff really it doesn't take mental illness very seriously because it says everyone is mentally ill but all they need is like a brief two second talking to and then they shake right. it off and they're fine yeah it's a very um <clears throat> surface level reading of any of that stuff that is Borderline insulting. Well, it's the, it's the popular conception of depression, which is just to be like, to not have any like aim in your life. You know, to be right. like down in the dumps is not really what I consider to be yeah, depression. I, it's, it is kind of regressive because it's view towards depression is the traditional view where it's just like, yeah, you just, just walk it off. Yeah. Just pull yourself, get out of bed and pull yourself yeah, out of it, it which, which, which is, is, which works not, for some people, but it's not in the, the sense of the sickness of depression. It doesn't make it right. Sense. Exactly. Yeah. And it is, it is not the, uh, um, the way that most people who talk about depression seriously like to ha- or hear other people talk about it. That was such, it's, she's, she's such a terrible, <laughs> this whole thing is terrible. But I did like, that scene felt the most like Picard. All I could think of during that scene was, I wish that Picard had just showed up in a weird non-Picard show as a guest actor in one episode mm-hmm. like this and delivered a monologue like that. Yeah. And I would have been like, yeah. that's all I kind of need from this character yeah. at this point. Because I was... All that scene did to me was make me think about how bizarre the construction of Jean-Luc Picard is at this point in this series, where he's so old and he's been through so much. How can he not be brimming with wisdom and confidence about right. his life? You know, He's a fucking robot now. He's, he's, he should just punch through his enemies and deliver <clears throat> monologues to people that is, need it. Is making Picard a robot golem? Like top ten worst <laughs> decisions in all of narrative history. 
<laughs> it has to be up there, right? And they, they were trying so hard to not acknowledge it this year because of how yeah. weird it was. It's so, so stupid. Because <laughs> they're not even really dealing with it. You know, they're, the only thing that it's done no. here is that it, he's he's like knocked out his circuit breakers or shot or something and he needs to be rebooted. But they haven't dealt with the fact that he is no longer who he was in any sense of the, the word. It's, it, you know, it, it, the, the scene where he's in the, the clinic felt like a great example of what I was talking about last episode of the episode before where this show wants to tell the story that it wants to tell regardless of whether or not stuff that came before it fits into it. But just to make sure that people don't yell at them, they will pay the most passing of, of reference to that stuff. <clears throat> because like that scene when he is on the gurney, 90% of that scene reads like literally any scene of a person who's in a coma in a, in a show. Yes. And she's like, I mean, his heart rate's fine. His blood pressure's okay. And I'm like, why does he have blood pressure? Yeah. He's a robot. <laughs> it's like they wrote the scene and then someone was like, oh, oh shit. He's a robot. <laughs> Picard's a robot. We forgot. Is, can you just throw some stuff in there to make it? Oh, yeah. I'll have the, I'll have the machine, you know, spark out because he's a, he's a robot yep. heart or some yep. shit. But, like, they're talking about his brain and his memories and his heart functions and stuff. And it's like, uh, what? What's why is he a robot at this point? Yeah, yeah. Why why is it not like more, why are they not using this more in this moment to yep. freak out this doctor? Like, isn't that where the fun of this concept would come from? I don't know. <laughs> he's, she's unaware. He seems normal. He's knocked out. I mean, I, I guess we can. He's just- he's in a coma. And yeah. was it Rafi? They want to wake him up or something, and Rafi's like, "No, he's in a coma. That's what your body does that when it's trying to protect you." And no one's like, "He's a robot." <laughs> <laughs> well, the doctor's standing right there. They can't. They can't. They can't justify. Who? Can, why? It was just six episodes. Just tell her. I know. Who gives she a shit? Know. I know. There's no reason not to know. It, it's a good. I mean, the the other major thing is that. Uh, this cast is inflated by double what it needs to be, really. And oh, so many yeah. of the characters, like they killed off Elnor, which was nice because Elnor, you know. I still one, think that was a mistake. It's one, But it's killed. one down. I understand your yes, point, but yeah. it's one down. Raffi and Seven have zero reason oh boy, to exist yeah. in this world. And well, <coughs> excuse me. Seven I think Borg they had. Okay. Yeah, I think they had a really clever thing going with, with Seven, at least in concept. But they're not doing anything with it. They just pay it the most passing of gestures. Every yeah, they bring six it up episodes. here. Yeah, they, they yeah. bring it up here because she's comfortable talking to people uh, without her Borg implants, and they mention right, it. which yeah. is interesting. Yep. I I don't think you need Rafi to be the one to talk about that. I think you could get rid of her and yep. have I don't know Rios say it or I don't know. It doesn't matter. Well, Rios is too busy post his fascist uh, run in with Ice. He's now like you know what cigars are great. This is the greatest timeline <laughs> that yeah, I've ever. We have. Real cigars, yeah. <laughs> Real cigars and little matchboxes. I, it's, I mean, that's the thing about the t- writers playing telephone. It's almost like, did the person who wrote this not pay attention to what his arc has been this season? He's supposed to be in like, he's been imprisoned by, you know, the fascist police who are rounding people up unjustly or whatever in this universe. Mm-hmm. And he's apparently completely forgotten about it. Are we going to, is he going to go back to the ice storyline or is that just over? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea how they would bring my that back my up. real question in that scene was: I, Does he light the cigar? I can't remember. I, think I don't. He, he, I know he lights a match, but does he? Light I don't the think cigar? he does. No, okay. I, I've never. I, kept, I don't think the show can have people smoking in it. It's not that kind. of I was going to say I kept waiting for him to light the cigar because I was going to say why is why is a man from the future lighting a cigar indoors? Yeah. in twenty twenty four, like you you can't do that now. I don't think that you <laughs> can do that in the, the future of Star Trek. It's a high end gala. You, you can you can light and smoke whatever you want at the, this kind of a place. No, this I don't think the show would ever allow a character to smoke a cigar. He just has one because it's a a character trait to have a cigar, I suppose. Just like just like Will Smith, he doesn't light. That's right. It. Just just it's for the look. He just bites it. Banned from the Oscars for ten years. Did you see that? News? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's until that's good thing he won one now. <laughs> that's right. They have to collect it via Zoom in the future. Um, yeah, I mean the just just him, Roman Polanski. 
Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Just inside my side. <laughs> <laughs> so Ooh. much of so much of this one I think was this is only a 38 minute episode but it felt like two and a half hours because the party sequence is interminable and it and, doesn't and have nothing, anything to do nothing fun happens like they they set it up as like this Ocean's Eleven thing but they don't it just it's just them hanging out at a party yep the Girati stuff was kind of fun but yeah even that was, was I like I liked her uh, duet yeah <laughs> <laughs> what is what is going on like that's that is something you i don't like the term filler the way that they use most people use it nowadays to sure. refer to television shows uh because a lot of times shows that they refer to as filler episodes are just slower episodes that are taking Char- their, character their time. Work character yes yeah. this was 80 percent filler yeah it's short it's short the stuff that they're doing just seems like they're pulling shit out of the hat, trying to figure out stuff to have people to do. The, I, I mean, maybe filler's not the right word, but it's just like, it, it's just, well, it's like it's the worst, so hastily yeah. put together. Yeah, it's just the worst executed version because I would have been down for an Ocean's Eleven episode, right, where there's like mm-hmm. a plot and a plan that they have to stick to, and you know, it's so weird. It's like. When they're going into this gala, the very scene cracked me up because it's like this weird editing, scripting, directing choice they make where Rios is getting his bracelet scanned, right? But Girardi hasn't changed the IDs yet. Right. And so Rios gets his thing scanned and it doesn't come up right. And he's like, oh, scan it again. And the guard scans again. They cut to Girardi and the board queen strapped into the chair. And it's like this tension thing. Is she going to get there in time? But over the over her earpiece, Picard is going, Rios's scan is not going through. And he's standing right next to Rios when the, yeah. when the scene is happening. So the security guard is listening to an old man say, you need to upload the, <laughs> the new IDs because Rios's scan is not working. Also, It's crazy. Also, at an event like that with security that heightened... You, you think they're going to let you in if you just whack the thing against your leg and it works the second time? I think it's one and done there. If it doesn't come up the right the first time, you're not getting in. It is terrible. The whole gala scene was just awful. I mean, the singing is bizarre. It's, it's a weird choice. Like, I understand why they did that. I mean, it's it's clearly supposed to be like, oh, the, the Borg Queen is giving Girati this confidence to yeah. break out of her shell and people love it and stuff. But it's such a weird choice it is it's not it's like not it's, this show it's it's it, that's a movie scene in a certain kind of movie you know and it works but it doesn't yeah. work here yeah it's um i i didn't like it because it wasn't it wasn't the board queen um letting Girati shine through her own uh skills and personality it was like just a set piece for something that like it's not like they talk about how she oh she just has such horrible stage fright you know what i mean yeah like it's yeah, just yeah. it's completely random I, um that, that's i the, think there's so much more they could have done uh as far as showing her starting to get confident and and do something and i don't know who slipped the band the, the cheat sheet for that song but they were right there with her the whole time <laughs> hit it that my my I understand what they're trying to do there. My whole problem with it is that it doesn't come from a sequence where Girardi and the crew are hanging out and the band is playing and she's like, I'll create a distraction. And she walks up onto stage and says, boys, can you play this one? And they start. It comes out of like the power goes out. Everyone's like screaming. And then she just appears and starts singing. And the band is like, all right, let's hit it, boys. And they go into it. There's no sense that... It's a real world situation where the band would be able to catch up with what Girardi is doing there, you know? I don't know. Good band. Good band will do it. They it's can pick se- out that key. They'll they'll <laughs> I don't know how they knew to play it at the right tempo, but they you ever hear, it out. there's there's a great story I heard uh, Bruce Springsteen tell one time where he he and the E Street band before they got famous were a backing band for for um Chuck Berry when he came through New Jersey. Sure. And he said uh Chuck Berry would he would just he walked in ten minutes before the show started with his guitar in his, in his case that was it he uh, demanded his money up front 
And then when it was time to play, he didn't talk to the band. He just walked out on stage, plugged in, and started playing his songs. And it mm-hmm. was up to the band to know which song, <laughs> what key it was, and to play along. And he, yeah. Springsteen was like, luckily, Clarence knew all these songs and knew the keys for all of them. And he would just call them out. Okay, oh, this is Bob, you know, Sweet Little Sixteen and see. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have just been them jumbling around. But, I mean, that's that's a pretty boss move to be able yes. to just show up and, and uh, have the band. Yep. Catch up with you like that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Literally a boss move in this case. Nobody read Springsteen. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Wait, wait, do you like Springsteen? Uh yeah, I like him selectively. Yeah. I'm not like a I'm not like a diehard, but I think his his great stuff is pretty undeniably great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm probably the same. One of the great American artists that I don't want to listen to all of his stuff, really. Right. But I, I like yeah. the good stuff. Oh, the great stuff. Um anyway, so I guess Girardi and the Borg Queen is our sequence here. I d I don't I don't mind the ending where it gets us to. I really mm-hmm. abhorred the sequences themselves that showed her talking to the Borg Queen. Um I didn't like it. I thought it made the Borg Queen feel like a comedy set piece or something mm-hmm. to see her walking around with her is very weird and very unsettling to see her like reclining with her arm around her and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't like it, but what did you think? Yeah, I, it didn't, it didn't bother me too much. Like <clears throat> and on the list of things in this episode that I didn't like, that was probably towards the bottom um, of the stuff. <laughs> That's a weird way to say it. I, 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 I disliked it less than, a lot of the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think, yeah, they are playing it a little, they are kind of turning the Borg queen into the same kind of character as everybody else where it's just sort of like snarkiness. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Cause you know, banter is how you show characters relate to each other in the right. 21st century and everything. Yep. And awkward um, kisses. And awkward kisses. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just I don't think they've landed this. I don't think they landed the Gerardi thing. Like I I know that that they've laid the track for it, and she's supposed to be lonely. But I I still every time a character goes up and tries to explain Gerardi's backstory, I've been like, you never let yourself blah blah blah. And this is thing. It's like all right, like I've never seen this character do anything that makes me feel that this is her characterization, other than other characters say stuff to her all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 weird cuz it's probably the thing I'm interested in the most, but I I don't think it's necessarily been done very well. I guess yeah. is a good way to say it. Yeah. Is I mean, I mean, yeah, cause certainly compared to like Raffi or anything mm-hmm. like that, like there's She's going to an ATM machine in the next episode, right? Like that's Yeah. Yes. Has to. Yep. She wants to close. Um What's that? What's left? Nothing, really, right? Just the, we talked about the eugenics, we talked about soon so did, Raffi, did, did you Raffi have is tempted by every bottle of liquor she sees. And yeah. She's seeing uh, Black visions label. of Elnor again yeah. when the plot <laughs> requires her to. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've, we've dissected all the, the points. Uh, any, like, meta aspects to this, really? Like, I feel like I'm just running into that point of these modern Star Trek series where I'm like, well, the plane's on fire. It's about to crash. Mm-hmm. Let's see if the wings cannot fall off on our way down. Right. Um, yeah. Because I, I've given up hope in realizing that the plot is going to make any sense. I feel like the time travel plot was like six years ago that we were t- talking yeah, about that. Seriously. I feel like I don't know how Laris can possibly tie into this in oh. any way. So speaking of that, how come nobody knows who Q is in the show? Yeah, I like, brought I, that up I, before. Yes. I well, I don't mind Raffi not knowing who Q is, mm. but not Laris. Or the watcher. Is like, yeah, yeah, she's no, a watcher. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Yep. Shouldn't she know who like she's from another planet, right? Yeah, maybe another universe. Like a higher Why, plane. I'm surprised that she doesn't know who Q is. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. But it seems like I feel like higher beings sh- should be more aware of each other. <laughs> Because they have to know, right? They have to know about each other. There must be someone there to stop their I, ability. I right? mean, I guess the only thing I could think of is that is the the group that she's from located primarily in the Alpha Quadrant. So mm. she, like everybody else, doesn't know the Borg exist yet because it's they're still out in the Delta Quadrant somewhere. Oh, maybe. Also, 
how come Girardi isn't drawn to the Borg who are in the ice in Antarctica? Yeah. Yep. They'd be Gotta out bring there. Those guys back to life. When did? Oh, the, yeah, that would have been obviously later because it was the Enterprise episode. Um, least least Star Trek moment. Soon running over Picard with his with his Tesla, Oof. or the Borg Queen saying you had intercourse with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the car. The car is. <laughs> yeah, I think the car. <laughs> I don't know. I what just a- don't. I'm just my my narrative and storytelling senses are just on fire watching the show because I just don't know what's going on. Right. And like I, I know the very basics of it. It's like, oh, they have to stop. What's her name from they have to make sure she gets on the ship. But I don't know really why they haven't really explained that. Um, that's like the only thing that they've told us at this point for with four episodes left to go is that it's for some reason is important that she gets on that ship. Yes. And I don't, they keep adding, hanging all of these things off of it that, first of all, they introduced that very late and they just keep hanging stuff off of it without offering any sort of movement in the story. Right. Like we're at the halfway point. Stuff should st- be starting to kind of coalesce more. Um, and it's not. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the rest of the show has in store for us. I mean, it feels like a long time, right? We have four episodes left. And do you think that we're going to see the alternate timeline come into play just to get a taste of what it is? And then they'll somehow revert the timeline to before the divergence and fix it there? Because if they don't, if they don't show me or demonstrate the path that Adam Soong leads us down, right, that is a huge logic leap to me that right. he becomes the dictator of the world somehow because of this. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I feel that we have to see how he starts down this journey to go in that direction. And I don't know, like... Otherwise, if they don't show us that, I feel like I don't understand how you can fill four episodes with what's left to see here because it feels yeah. like you just stop her or you get her on the, the space shuttle and she makes it and she does it and everything's happy and everything reverts. I I don't know. I don't know how much is... There's not really much of a story left that I can see unless they just keep inventing things, which is what they are want to do, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I just find it disappointing because you've got all these pieces and all these characters that should be making things interesting and they're just making things complicated like i it's q may as well not even have been the fucking show at this point right like i i still have the same questions that i had from the beginning which is i don't know how <clears throat> the uh the timelines and the the, the tra- time travel jives together in in terms of what he is actually doing and why he's put this into motion um yeah, the structure of the time travel is still like I think I understand it, but the show has not gone to great lengths to explain what has happened here. You know, yeah, it's confusing. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, unfortunately, it's going to come down to a, a couple of monologues. I think explaining what's going on. Yeah, and uh, you know, that's always fun. Yeah. So, on to the like, <laughs> I, I still, I'm still trying to like, I'm still trying to rationalize what they're doing here with like the events that they are causing has to be the thing that plays into the, what happened on the stargazer, right? Like it has to, it has to. Yeah. And in a otherwise, traditional I don't time know, travel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand how any of the time travel stuff shakes out if that's not the case. Yeah. It's just, we're, we're not, I don't know. Like if, even if they show that when we get to the end and they go back in time to, or back, back to the future and they get on the stargazer and they reveal it, it's, um, it's not like the show has been focusing on that moment, right? So if they get there and they fix it or they realize that the Borg ship appearing at the start is some part of this causal loop or whatever, it's just going to be another throwaway line that they fix right then and there, right? There's no mm-hmm. time to see what that means or whatever. I don't know. So I'm still thinking about Sung getting on the board of NASA <laughs> or whatever. Like she's going into quarantine for three days yes you couldn't have figured out a way to get her while she's in quarantine 
she, she's she's without op- yeah she's out there now I, I know what you mean she's 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 an open target yeah like i don't know he's a brilliant scientist this is the best he could come up with yeah <laughs> yeah i he, build a he clone try- assassin or i mean if you are going to get on the on the board shut the mission down try to yeah. you know what i don't yeah. know do so i the only is so as of right now the only reason he got on the board was to get into the party. Yes, and he does not attack her in the party. Right. It's insane. He just gets mad because she wanders off and he doesn't go after her. <laughs> <laughs> she wanders off and is by herself. It would have been a perfect time to kill her. Yeah. And then he just goes out and sits in his car and hopes they walk outside. <laughs> I can't believe he ran over the car. Oh, my God. Uh, so... That's it for this one, I think. Let's end with a discussion of the teaser that they released for season three, mm. which has all of our favorite TNG characters that this show is going to embarrass and humiliate and destroy oh, in front of us in the oh, third God. season. Um, first off, it's incredible they released that halfway through this season. Oh, it's such a fuck you to the show. <laughs> yeah, they have, they have no confidence in this. Yeah, well, okay. I have a theory about that, actually. E- either Yes... Either yes, it's true, they don't have much confidence in it, and they need to give you reasons to stick around, or the reason that they did that is because somehow the end of this season is going to give that away. But still, you you reveal that that's the teaser that ends the season, then. Yeah, you would think so, yes. But I can't think of any other reason why you would do that in the middle of the season. Who who the uh, was it Terry Metalis? Yes, said like, oh well, we didn't think we'd be able to keep it secret any longer. You kept it secret for like a year. I hadn't heard a whisper of this no, until nothing. The teaser, and like it's already sh- like the season's already shot. It's already done. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know if the ratings are bad or the or the viewers are, the, are down or something. But it's very weird that you would do that in the middle of this season. Yeah, yeah. I, I assume viewership is down because I don't. I think that's the one thing that would drive that kind of stuff. Like I don't think they're making a creative "Wow, this show kind of sucks" decision if it was getting a ton of of eyeballs. But I mean, of course, we're going to watch it. We had promised because Picard's only going to be three seasons, so we might as well. If mm-hmm. we're watching these two, we might as well wrap it up with the third. Um, Wes, if we watched two seasons of this horse shit. And then you said, we're not going to watch the season where the entire fucking crew of the Enterprise shows back. I will burn your house down. <laughs> well, it's going to be so awful, right? I don't, I don't care. I don't care at this point. It's like it's the only thing making any of this worth it, any of this show <laughs> worth it for me, is that well, I get, we get one more shot of uh, you know dopamine. Yeah, seeing fucking Beverly Crusher on screen again. I don't know. Yeah, I. Worf's head looks the same. As long as Worf's head is the same, I'll be happy. Are they going to be anything more than glorified cameos? Uh, according to him, yes. Oh, really? Like, according to him, they are all like part of the show. But you know, wow. who knows? I, you know, if this show is good, I would be like, what a fantastic way to end picard's swan song yeah here yeah You're like this is what i'm 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 amazed that they managed to get this done and that they they deserve this and everything and this is going to be a fantastic what a great what a great valentine to the fans to quote right Braga or whatever but this is going to be i don't know this this is it's not going to resemble what those character interactions were before i mean nepenthe yeah. was good um I just have no faith. I have no faith you that know, this is possible. Knowing knowing this show, it's going to be... We have this amazing plot for season three where and it's not tied to budgetary constraints at all. But what happens is Q transports the entire crew of the Enterprise to a park. And they can't <laughs> leave the park. And they have to figure out how do they get out of the park? Where is the park? Is it some sort of space park? But regardless... It's going to be just them sitting on benches in a park for 10 episodes because that's all we can pay for. That's what we demand to see. It's going to be the crew is on the bridge of the Enterprise. Q appears, and he makes them all 30 years older. 
and they all have trouble walking around and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, this is good. I they, they, they got to just go for, they have to just go for broke and do a, I mean, I know they did this. This is how the fucking show ended. But if they don't do the crew of the Enterprise steals the Enterprise <laughs> <laughs> and goes back out to save seven of nine or some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. how do you, you, if anything less than them all being together again on the same starship is going to feel like a missed opportunity. It is. And I, I, I mean, I'm getting close to just, I'm going to walk away from this Picard series just saying, you know, I'm too old to think that this has damaged the character in some ways. Yeah. Like it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't really bother me, but no. this was not good for the character. You know, like mm-hmm. there, this was not a, this is not a denouement that I'm like, that people would go like, Oh, this is what a, what a touching little wrap up mini series yeah. that we basically had. This is just like the character doesn't feel right. They kill him and turn him into a robot and don't talk about it. He's going to run into his old cast members and the conversations are going to be bad and the plot is going to be kind of insane and screwy. It's not going to be the it's not going to be the sort of like the the crew settles into a final acceptance that this is their last thing in a way that Nemesis couldn't be, you know. Right. It's, it's going to be wonky time travel trauma emotional unpacking betrayal stuff and it's just it's going to be really bad yeah we didn't even talk about the flashbacks the the trauma flashbacks oh that's right with his uh, mother right where she gets dragged off by goblin creatures yes yeah (laughs) oh but the, the one thing renee picard has to be the borg right queen yeah i think so she says look up yeah, or he, well, sa- he does, says, "Look up to her." He says, "Look does up." Does he not say that to Gerardi at some point? Does he? But I mean, I, I would, I would say. But he points up and look. He looks at a specific yeah. thing when he says it, and they talk about it. Yeah, they have like a moment together. Yeah. Um. So I think, yeah, it's most likely going to be her. She's the right body shape too. Gerardi's too small. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I won't care a lick about that when it happens. <laughs> so we'll see. I guess we're done. Two of one with, um, you know, if the show was a little bit smarter, I'd almost say there was a little bit of a sexual undercurrent here where uh, the, not Laris at the end is like, I want to get inside Picard. It's two of one. The Borg queen wants to talk about sex with Gerardi. Um, if the show had more of a point, I'd almost assume it's some kind of like relationship merge. Rios is just, slobbering all over a long phallic object yeah yeah that's and uh her push-up bra is making two into one yeah so yeah that's quite a dress she has this this, this is all that's all we've got all right i guess we're done thanks everybody for listening to this two of one is the most recent episode of star trek picard you can join the discord if you want to talk about it there people are enjoying talking about it well they're enjoying talking hopefully i don't know if they're enjoying talking about this but what a show. What a what a season of yeah. Star Trek. Um I'm I'm just going to end on uh, with this one, Clay. I you know, the Voyager documentary is being made, they made the DS9 one. The oh, only, I didn't know they were doing that. Uh the Voyager one? Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. Maybe by the same people as the DS9 one, so it should oh, cool. turn out pretty well. So we'll get 5 minutes of remastered Voyager footage. Yes, and Kate Mulgrew will not be a part of it probably. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um but I'm looking forward to that. But the one documentary outside of the Captains and all the other documentaries and this is Spock or whatever, the one documentary I need to know is I need to see the working process for how these modern shows are made because yeah, yeah. I do not understand how they all turn out the same this way unless alex kurtzman is literally the only writer in the room and he rewrites everything that comes in or if if he's like there when they're breaking the story and he's just like 90 percent of the story breaking comes through him the 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 problems are so consistent and the weird decisions are so the same i need to know how the show is made because it doesn't make sense to me that they're different production teams and different writers but they all come out the same way yeah yeah. No, it is it is really fascinating how similar they are. And it really it makes me fearful for a strange new world. Um yes. because I mean all signs point to it just being another 
show from the same uh, mill. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully, <laughs> I mean, Lower Decks managed to break through, I think, because they couldn't possibly use the same team to make that show. Right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it's going to be interesting to see if Lower, if uh, Strange New World has any, can can take any steps out of this trend but it's just i don't know man it's just it's so frustrating because i want so badly to like it Mm. and it's just the same stuff and i guess consistency is something that they pride themselves on yeah i mean i'm willing to i'm willing to say that star trek is you know dead or whatever to use the dramatic language i mostly feel bad that people we're getting paid to cover these ones and they're not good. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's this, yeah. it's this weird trade off where it's like, yeah, the new stuff is all really bad and uh, we're all watching it. And I don't, I don't know where that leads us, but I don't have high let's hopes just, for changing worlds. Let's just fingers crossed that that fourth Kelvin movie actually happens and it features the Kelvin universe enterprise D captained by John Luke Picard played by Tom Hardy. Yeah. That's what I want to say. I'd be fine with it. I'm still wanting my Voyager reboot. I still think that's the one that that's where we need to go. But not with this, not with this group. I guess we're done. I don't think they have a next episode planned. I don't see the. I know they have one planned. I don't have the title for it, so I can't say that. But this is two of one. Girardi walks off into the city. We're going to see some borgification, and then we'll see what the you hell know, else goes on. I I know this is we're on our way out here, but someone in our Discord pointed out that you know you were talking about how there's too many characters. They pointed out that. Rios, uh, Rafi, and Seven literally have nothing to do in this episode. No. They just go to the party. They just go to the party. Girardi yes. and Picard are the only people that need to be at the party. Yes. Yep. I mean, that's the right. if it's a better Ocean's Eleven plot, all the characters are doing something, right? Right, yeah. And each sequence of a character has this little tension thing that builds up that you go oh man right. how's this plot gonna work out and then it gets resolved and you're happy but well because there was only one thing they had to do to which get was in get into the party to get in <laughs> and cross the road at the end which uh, they yeah. semi-successfully did yeah i don't yeah. know let's <laughs> i don't know I don't know. All right, we're done. Two of one. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you for supporting the show. Hopefully, you're enjoying Star Trek Picard. I would I would appreciate it if the show were to get back on track so we could have something a little bit more interesting to talk about than just, like, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? How did that happen? Mm-hmm. I, would, I would love a storyline answer in the next episode. So please, give us some kind of plot. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time.